Music tickles my cheeks. It does. <laughs> Something tells me I may know you as a lover and a friend. This voice keeps whispering in my other ear. I may never see. Welcome Song Town. We have Jack Timpson in the house. And um, gosh, that was amazing for me. That was giving me chill bumps because I grew up, one of my first bands I ever played in, that was one of the songs we did. And now, you know, many years later, I get to sit here and sing some harmony with the great Jack Timpson. So, it's a hell of a lot of fun <laughs> being us. You know? so. Let's rewind a little bit further. And let's go back to when you were writing peaceful easy feeling is there a story about how you came up with it because i picture some guy sitting in the desert um doing peyote and no i was just kidding um but Wait. those were the those were the 70s yeah those and were so i picture um you in california with this wonderful music scene the eagles linda ronstadt jd mm -hmm. souther all this great bustling 
music that's coming out of, of California. That sounds like and, fun, man. Yeah. So, what? How did you come up with well, peaceful, easy feeling? I was in that whole scene, but not till uh, later. I right. Wrote, uh, when I wrote "Peaceful, Easy Feeling," uh, my friend had made a poster about me so I could get some gigs, and on the poster he quoted all kinds of people. He said, uh, "You know, a real intellectual, Marshall McLuhan, who had written this book about media at the time. He goes, a real man, Joni Mitchell." Well, I didn't happen to know Joni Mitchell at the time. I'm sure she would have said that had she met me. But, And he had all these quotes, a good boy. From people mom, about you that, that, that knew he nothing. He just made them all up. He made them all up. But somehow this poster found its way out to El Centro, a couple hours away from where I lived in San Diego, way out in the desert. So the guy hired me. I don't think he knew that this poster was all made up. And I showed up, and it was a little place not too much bigger than uh, your living room. I mean, it was a, in a mini mall. That little coffee house that sprang up. And uh, so I played, and then <clears throat> there was an incredibly beautiful waitress <clears throat> who seemed quite interested in taking me to her house, and I just went, okay. <laughs> and I told the guys I was with that I wouldn't need a ride back to where I was going to stay. Right. <clears throat> then the next thing I looked around, and the girl's gone. And then the guy's <laughs> closing up, and he leaves, and so there's nothing. Uh, I've got my guitar, and I'm just sleeping on the linoleum floor of this little place. There's just nothing there. So he let you sleep on the floor? He let me stay there. I didn't have any place to go. I didn't know anybody in El Centro. And well, we didn't have cell phones, you know. Now this thing, you'll notice it has these curvy curves, you know. But it really won't substitute for a girl. It's not soft enough, you know. However, if you don't have a girl, you just have this, it's better than nothing, because you can write a song. And that's what I did. And I turned that poster over on the other side and started writing the song. I wrote a, and this is important, like you were saying, uh, there's no such thing as writer's block if your expectations are low enough, Yeah. and I always knew that, so I, I started writing, and it was, all these lines are really stupid, they're really bad song lines, yeah. but then I just kept going, and I got to the peaceful, easy feeling line, and boom, you know, so now the piece of paper's in the Grammy Museum, you know, oh. it also has my bills for the month, like and it has $4 the dollars for gas, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> And that's how I that's how I wrote the song. And then I, the thing is about it is, I came back to San Diego where I lived, and I saw some other beautiful women. A woman down at the street fair had these turquoise earrings, and I just put her right in the song. And then I so I saw three or four different women. I so it was a work in progress. It kept going, yeah. and then I finished it up on Washington Boulevard at the Derwiner Schnitzel. Now the Derwiner Schnitzel. This is over forty years ago. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they just had a party for me there. San Diego declared Peaceful Easy Feeling Day. Took me back. That Wiener Schnitzel is still there. Oh, wow. Forty years later, almost everything else is gone. And I never would have predicted that what would still be there, it, except they changed it from Der Wiener Schnitzel. It's now called Wiener Schnitzel. Otherwise, they got the same food and everything. And, you know, the, I mean, you know, those guys gave me, uh, they, the, the Wiener Schnitzel people gave me a solid gold uh, wiener. <laughs> and uh, and that not everybody has one of those. And then they, they put a plaque on the, on the little place where I was when I wrote the song. Boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom, yeah. And that's, that's kind of part of the story, you know, and then it goes on from there. It's like a kid, when, once they leave home, you know, people go, oh, I was trekking through the Himalayas up in the mountains, and I went and there was a bunch of Sherpas sitting around the campfire, and they were singing your song. You know, so, uh, that happens. They went and gave me a wiener schnitzel. Uh, yeah, they did. <laughs> so that's how it happened with that song. Wow.